Mr. Cockle was cleaning the new sign on the back door of the bucket and spade guest house. Robin, Rosie, come on quick, but be quiet. The two of them came tumbling out, not all that quietly, but quietly enough for them. What is it, Daddy? Asked Rosie. We've got a visitor. Gosh, said Robin. What a big bird. What is it? It's a seagull, said Helen Cockle. I've been feeding it. Mummy, said Rosie. There's something funny about its wing. Oh, you're right, it must have broken it sometime. Poor thing, said Rosie. It's very tame, she said. But just as she said it, the seagull squawked. It made a jump, and Robin thought that was very funny. Don't you laugh, you're silly, said Rosie. Well, said Robin, you're a scaredy cat. I am not. That's enough, you two, said Mrs. Cockle. You're never happy unless you're squabbling. It wasn't quite true, but it was true enough. And Robin and Rosie calmed down. Well, I must get on with some work, said Mr. Cockle. And so must I, said Mrs. Cockle. Oh, said Robin. Where's the seagull gone? I expect it's flown off to its friends, said Rosie. How could it fly with a bent wing? Well, I don't know. Maybe we could search for it. Oh, we'll never find it. While they were thinking about what to do, Mr. Shippham came across from his boatyard just next door. Hello, my dears, he said. Your mum in, is she? Yes, said Rosie. I'll tell her. Mummy, Mr. Ship's here. Hello, Mr. Ship. Oh, morning, Mrs. Cockle. I, hear, I have to go down to the harbour to help a friend of mine. The engine on his boat's broken down. I wondered if... Uh, I'm just on my way to the village now, said Mrs. Cockle. I'm going to do a bit of shopping. I'll give you a lift in our car. Wow, ain't I the lucky one, said Mr. Ship. Thank you. Right, children, said Mrs. Cockle. Daddy's upstairs painting the back bedroom. Don't go off anywhere without telling him. Can we go in your yard, Mr. Ship? Asked Robin. Well, yes, said Mr. Ship. But don't mess about with any tools or paint, or I'll keel haul the pair of you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. And then Mr. Ship and their mother went off. Bye, Mum. Bye, Mr. Ship. I'll tell Dad where we're going, said Robin. We're going into Mr. Ship's yard, Dad. All right. And I've got uh, one, two, three, four biscuits. You'll get fat, shouted Mr. Cockle. Bye then. Bye. Bye. The two of them went across the grass and threw the hole in the fence into Mr. Ship's yard. Let's have a look at the donkey, said Robin. Fury, called Rosie. Fury. <coughs> Mr. Fingal's donkey came from the back of its stall and pushed its great, gentle, hairy face at them to be stroked. I think he's hungry, said Rosie. He always is, said Robin. Give him one of our biscuits. But Fury took two. Oh, we'd better keep the others in case we get hungry, said Robin, and Rosie agreed. They gave Fury a last pat and went to have a look at Mr. Ship's old boat. It looked just the same as it always did, with the same bits missing from the same places. Perhaps we could mend it for him, suggested Robin. But Rosie said, oh, no, Mr. Ship said we're not to touch his tools. All right then, let's build our own boat and sail that round the world. Oh, yes! Rosie thought that was a smashing idea, and they started to look around for things to build it from.
Rosie found an old tin bath with a handle at each end. It had a hole in the bottom. But that doesn't matter, she said. It'll do for the, uh, the, the big bit. The hull, said Robin. Mr. Ship told me it was called the hull. And I've got an empty cardboard box for the bridge. That's where the captain stands, said Rosie. Yes, I know. There. They looked at it. It's got a hull, said Rosie. And it's got a bridge, said Robin. It ought to have a mast and a sail. Yes. There's the yard brush. I'll go and get it. While she was away, Robin found an old sack for the sail that was only a bit dirty. And then Rosie came back with the yard brush and it didn't take them long at all to get their boat finished. Now, said Robin, let's sail round the world. Who's going to be captain? Well, I'll be captain and you can be the crew. Why can't I be captain? Because I'm bigger than you, said Robin. No, you're not. So they stood back to back to measure who was tallest. But of course, then they couldn't see themselves. So in the end, Robin said, I know, let's take turns at being captain. And Rosie agreed. Then they set sail on their long voyage. A whale! Ship ahoy! Land ho! Hoist the mainsail! After a bit, they thought they must be about halfway round the world, so Rosie, who was being captain, said, A desert island! Let's land! Robin lowered the sail. Time for ship's biscuits, he said. We've only got chocolate digestives, said Rosie. No, in the game. Mr. Ship says that's what they used to eat when he was a sailor. Oh, said Rosie. They're in the back, uh, the stern. They've gone, she said. I put them in there and they've gone. I bet you've eaten them. No, I haven't, said Robin very crossly. I bet you have. Have not, said Rosie, even crosser. And they were pushing each other quite hard when an awful... Ah! made them stop. They turned round ah! to see the seagull with the bent wing. It had one webbed foot on a piece of chocolate biscuit and was pecking lumps off it. Gosh, said Robin. The seagull must have taken them. <laughs> Robin... Rosie, have you two nuisances had my yard brush? Oh, yes, Mum, said Robin. It's the mast of our ship. Oh, that's good, said Mrs Cockle. <laughs> but I'm afraid you'll have to put into harbour for repairs. I want to sweep the path. They fished the brush out of the cardboard box. Mummy, ah. said Rosie, the seagull's stolen our ship's biscuits. Oh. It must be a pirate seagull. A pirate, said Rosie. A pirate's a bad sailor who robs other sailors and sinks their ships, said their mother. Oh, said Robin. Can we give him a pirate name? Hmm, said Helen Cockle, thinking. How about Ben Gunn? He was quite a nice pirate. Oh, oh yes! yes said Robin and Rosie, both together. Now, come in and have some lunch. You can sail round the world again this afternoon when I've swept the path. They both thought that was a very good idea. Bye-bye, Ben Gunn, they said, and the seagull squawked. 